Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's broadcast of the Blue Water League Gold Division. I'm Beck Irita. Joining me tonight is Rylian. How are you doing tonight? Uh, second, you, you coming back this week? Yes, How this is feeling? the second time uh, that I'm going to be casting here for the Gold League. I'm always feeling great, of course. Uh, you know, this match is going to be uh, for my cat here today. We did have to put them down. Shout out to you, Turcher. Love you, buddy. Shout out to you, handsome. And uh, so, yeah, I'm hoping sir, for some really good action, uh, you know, for tonight. Uh, you know, it is week number five. Both teams have not won a single game leading up to tonight's matchup, but it is guaranteed one of them tonight will definitely be walking away here with a dub. So that is something to look forward to. <laughs> yes, uh, that's always when you look at two teams who are in the trenches like this, it's always very refreshing to know that to, at the end of the day, one of them will finally get their first win. And that first win could be the turnaround of their season. So, you know, anything is possible. Uh, and I think both these teams are gonna be looking to make sure that they are the ones on the receiving end of the victory. But we'll have to see how that plays out. Uh, yes. Currently waiting for players to get in to draft. Uh, so while we do that, Last week, Nameless Rising, uh, they lost to the other Flannel roster, funnily enough, Flannel Zephyr. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, Flannel Ethereal three, ended up losing two, to uh, Big Duck Enterprises? Entourage. Uh, Entourage. Big Duck Entourage. Uh, and they, you know, both, as you said, both teams are currently looking to get their first win. And now we are in the draft, and... We've already got uh, targeted bans towards me with Udir and Maokai <laughs> being taken out by both sides. Unbelievable stuff. Uh, oh, Karma Jungler, huh? is our first priority. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Karma being the first pick. Normally, you know, in the Plat League uh, and in my own personal games as well, Jinx has been the highest priority, either pick or ban. Very, very hyper carry S plus tier ADC. And, uh, you know, I thought it was going to be picked up by blue. If it wasn't, then I thought red immediately. But Caitlyn is actually going to be the pickup here uh, for BDE uh, for game number one. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Flannel Ethereal for game number one. Flannel's on red side. Nameless is on blue for this first game here. So uh, very interesting. We're going to have a heavy poke, uh, you know, long range bot lane. It looks like here for the side of Flannel, uh, you know, between the Lux and the Caitlyn. Uh, I'm an ADC main. So you being the jungle main here, that kind of uh, matchup, you know that they're going to be pushed up very heavily into lane. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I do not see a Zac ban and I do not see a Nocturne ban. Do you feel like that is a very good pick or what would you be choosing into these two specific here if you were the jungle? Uh, honest, I mean, Fiddle is genuinely Ooh. something that I think will work because their CC is something, it is very much out of Fiddle's engage range. So it's a bit harder for him to get in because he has to deal with traps. He has to deal with the Lucent Singularity, which can reveal him. But otherwise their CC from these two champs, at least, is unable to actually deal with him. And Shed is another champion who can't very easily and reliably deal with the Fiddle engage. So uh, I do think that the Fiddle is pretty solid into these low mobility bot laners, mm -hmm. uh, as that is another champion who I enjoy to play uh, it, in the jungle. So uh, if I'm Fiddle this game, I'm so far counting my blessings but we haven't seen the jungler come in from Flannel, and that will make the difference for whether or not Fiddle gets to have any fun this game. 
Yes, indeed. And we do have a Shen pick, like you had said here, for uh, Ethereal as well. So their top lane is definitely going to be locked in here. Now, if I was on the side of Nameless, knowing that Shen is going to be teleporting elsewhere across the map, right? Uh, have someone that can definitely easily push that that lane. Trundle, I think, would be a good duelist, you know, up into a uh, Shen. Uh, same thing with the Darius. You know, cannot go wrong with either one of those. Really, really strong, 4-1 uh, pushing, so he's always going to be a threat, or they could always be a threat off to the side lane while Shen is teleporting elsewhere with his ulti. He's going to have to teleport back to lane, so you already know exactly what the game plan is here for Shen. Just to save Caitlyn, save the Lux, save whomever the mid laner is, uh, and not be very present in lane. So I think that they should take full advantage of that. Uh, you know, Nameless, now that they showed that early here on the side of Ethereal, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. We have the Vi and the J4 bands coming out. So once again, two <laughs> targeted picks towards that jungle. Uh, and then the Gwen and the Jack. So two champions that do have that potential for that 4-1 split pushing but still plenty others that they can choose from here uh for nameless but a mumu is actually going to be the jungler here so they have a really good heavy front line for caitlin and lux to be able to do a lot of damage stay behind you know two super tanks here uh lots of cc also between these two so that is going to be kind of difficult for them to kind of get through on the side of nameless yeah it's going to be a little bit of now that there's a really solid front line, it's a lot of it's going to come down to whether or not Fiddle can get those fights started from the backside and mm -hmm. just have Sivir, Karma, and now Urgot be able to run in through the front and, you know, take a fight on that kind of angle. But that's really difficult to execute. And, you know, it just comes down to whether or not these players can do it. But uh, I do, with the Urgot coming in here, uh, with all of the movement Ooh. speed, and now the Orianna, uh, the Orianna is interesting because there's not really, aside from Urgot exactly and technically Fiddle, there's not really a great ball delivery system. So I think it's a lot, that's going to make Orianna Shockwave a lot less impactful uh, mm -hmm. than maybe they would like. But hey, uh, it's not like they can't get the Shockwave off. It's just going to be a, potentially a bit more difficult. Yep, no, definitely a little bit more difficult, but I think they're not necessarily setting up for like the uh, the Fiddle Oriana Shockwave, because Fiddle, the fear is going to send everybody away from the center, which is going to be the exact opposite of what Shockwave yeah, is trying to this, accomplish here. Yeah. <laughs> so that is a little bit uh, difficult of a setup here, but it does leave a lot of opportunity for positioning and for flanks that Oriana can set up for. So, you know, right as soon as Fiddle goes in, as long as not everyone is clumped up, uh, you know, just behind or in one little area for, you know, the Amumu or the the Lux to really have a huge impact with their Wombo combo. You know, if Oriana is kind of sitting to the side, positioning herself away from the team, but can still impact everybody with the ult, or maybe she could set up and then the ulti from the Fiddlesticks can come afterwards. Who knows? You know, there is a lot of options here, but, you know, looking at both the teams, I, I really do like the front line and the tankiness that they have uh coming in from ethereal i'm not gonna lie they lack that severely on nameless but they make up for it with a lot of damage though between you know the ergot the fiddle the sivir or even karma does a lot of damage uh you know so that is something that they have going for them but I, if they don't get those early kills i feel like they're just gonna have a problem the tanks are gonna outscale and then i believe ethereal might take game number one here how are you feeling um I do think that it's gonna be tough for Nameless to play this game. Their front line is far from ideal, and there really isn't a great synergy between Orianna and the rest of the picks. Uh, however, I do, while I do think Ether uh, Flannel has the better roster here, uh, in terms of, not roster, uh, the better champions here, uh, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, building a normal composition. I do think that Nameless has some really interesting options. Uh, yep. And I, I feel like it's going to it's gonna come down a lot to what Fiddle can do uh, mm -hmm. in these fights. And if Flannel is not able to properly set up uh, around objectives, get that vision ready, they're a composition that can be very easily destroyed and disrupted by a well-placed Crow Storm. So, uh, I do think I would favor Flannel here, but I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Nameless take it. 
Okay, well, that is a very interesting take, 100%. So, you know, not necessarily rooting for Ethereal, but not against the Nameless either. I mean, it is going to be up to the teams and their skills. Uh, you know, both, once again, coming into the to the to tonight's matchup, 0 and 4. So one of them desperate for this victory here in this best of three series. So this is only game number one here. Uh, so it could go to either player. And then, of course, getting those jitters out for game number one, we prepare for game number two. And, uh, I mean... I don't know. I just, I, I think just dealing with the Amumu and the Shen and how much range that they have on Ethereal, like they're just able to keep them at bay while still being able to do a lot of damage. And nobody, nobody's getting onto the back line at all. Uh, you know, Fiddle, yeah, he has a really large AoE when it comes to his ulti here. And like you said, the Shockwave, there isn't really a whole lot of synergy. So they have to wait for the Amumu. They have to wait for the Shen to really engage and start every single fight and then react accordingly between, you know, Urgot, Karma speeding everybody up, giving them shields, you know, rooting, things like that. And they still have the reliability of Sivir ulti as well to, you know, disengage if they need to. Uh, but I definitely do not expect them to ever fully engage because they have nothing to, to go off that Oriana Shockwave, really. So it's mm. going to be hard. It's going to be hard. But yeah. this is going to be a fun game, though. Yeah, I think this is going to be a fun game. The champions that they have drafted... Uh, will provide, especially Nameless, the proactivity of their roster, I think will create some very fun fights uh, if they can navigate yeah. them. So uh, with that said, we are uh, going to be going to a quick break for the spectator delay. When we come back, we'll be in game one of our series between Nameless and Flannel Ethereal. So stick around. We'll have that game coming at you after the break.
Hello, everyone. Uh, you will notice that this is not video games. Uh, this is, in <laughs> fact, back to the analyst desk. Uh, and that is because here for our multi-billion dollar small indie company, uh, Riot Games, is still not able to properly have a spectator client. Uh, you know, we've been waiting for so long, uh, and it's still not here. Uh, so we're going to have to wait for replays. It's unfortunate, but we will still be able to get to the game to you. It's just going to take a little bit longer. Uh, so it'll this will be for the entire series. We'll have to work off the replay files unless Riot somehow manages to fix their issue uh, mid-patch, which uh, I do not think is going to happen. So with that said, uh, we will be back in the game at an undisclosed time as soon as we get that replay file and the replay itself up and running. So uh, stick around. Feel free to take a, you know, take go take a short walk, make a sandwich, and then come back, and there will be some video games for you, optimistically. So, uh, we'll be back then.
Welcome back, everybody. I hope you have sufficiently gotten your snacks and have prepared yourself for game one of our series between Nameless and Flannel Ethereal. Uh, and that is, of course, Nameless Rising. Uh, yes, Ethereal. indeed. Uh, nameless on the red side, uh, on the blue side, excuse me, Flannel Ethereal on the red side. I'm Becky Rita. Joining me on cast is. Oh, Ry, Ry Lion. Ry Lion. Yep. Ry Lion, Ry Leon. Doesn't matter. You can call me Hey You Dude as long as you're calling me. But yeah, yes. and, uh, and clicking buttons behind the scenes is Owls. So. Uh, if you've forgotten in the break, we have a couple of really fascinating compositions on the board here today. We've got a Fiddlesticks. We have a Shen for some reason. We've got a lot of fascinating champions here on the Rift. Uh, anything stands out? Anything that stands out to you from a first look as both teams have taken a very safe level one plan? Yeah, both level, uh, you know, the five point level one, no one's really invading. Definitely, I do not blame them. Both teams also have double teleport on the mid and top, so that's good. So I believe it's going to be a full five man squad in every single team fight, you know, neutrals. But no heal on the Sivir, she's opting in for the Ghost, you know, so even more movement speed there in the bot lane to once again either disengage or engage. Uh, while Caitlyn opted in for the safer pick with the heal and then has that sustain with the fleeting footwork there. So. This is going to be pretty, you know, I think pretty safe. We're going to have, uh, you know, pretty relaxed uh, game up until level six. I think everyone's just going to be farming, except for this top lane here. Urgot, you know, having that range advantage over the Shen is just going to be a big old bully in lane. And then, uh, you know, after level six, that's when Shen's going to be able to, you know, ulti to people and help his teammates out if need be. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that Shen's going to have to really look out for as we see a uh, cheater recall here, or an early recall from the two of them. Shen's gonna have to be pretty careful about Urgot's ability to obliterate turrets, as we do have a potential gank coming in. Prisma's gonna be walking up. Flash already getting blown by Atomic Rider. The bandage toss will go through as Prisma gets a lot of damage onto Atomic Rider. This likely will not be a kill. Definitely after that slow lands from the caustic cask of Urgot. So, uh, get early gank and early flash blown from the Urgot, and now Shen gets a little bit of breathing room here. Yeah, that's actually a hold on one second, still yeah, a lot no, of good, good action happening. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, but yeah, that was a great job from the Amumu there, you know, the onslaught that is Urgot. Uh, you know, wave still definitely pushed up, so uh, you know, Shen is in a good position to receive another gank, but Amumu does want it to, you know, fall too far behind in terms of CS, so. You know, he's like, hey, I got the wave to crash into you at least. You're even in farm now with him. So just play it safe, brother. You're going to be playing weak side. Uh, and I think, you know, Shen's going to take his role as such moving forward here. Yeah, and it's certainly Shen as a champion. He's basically in the waiting room to get whatever item he needs to actually start clearing waves because otherwise his wave clear is uh, non-existent. You need either Tiamat or... Um, bombies likely the bombies to actually get your clears going uh your wave clear going especially into ergot who has pretty decent wave clear not maybe not the fastest of clears but obviously he's pinning shen under tower here as both of our junglers uh the fiddle has taken a reset here as amumu is finishing up that first round of clears both junglers fairly even right now yeah the only real advantage has been in that top side gank but as these first objectives come up it looks like fiddle is going to be on the side of the grubbins looking to get that first round and presumably amumu would like to get that drake but the waves aren't in a great spot for it and, you know, being a jungle main yourself, I actually am curious because most of the uh, people that I speak with are either ADC uh, or mid uh, mainers here uh, for our casters. But, uh, you know, being jungle, what do you prioritize early on for neutral objective? The jungle or uh, the grubs or the dragon here, uh, you know, early on? It really depends on which of my sides is ha it has a better lane. 
So right now, obviously, it's pretty easy for Caitlyn and Lux to shove in eventually. Oh. But we do have a gang coming in as Minami is going to have to use the heal to get a little bit of movement speed. Ghost Fingers, not at level 6 yet, walking in menacingly. But that's about all Fiddle can do. We'll stick around, though, to just try and apply some more pressure on the bot side here. Get this wave shoved in, potentially looking instead to get themselves the Drake as Prisma has started up the Grubbins. And... To answer that question, it really does just depend on which side is currently stronger. Uh, typically, you are able to, unless things have gone super south, you are able to get that early trade of first round of grubs for the first Drake. So, okay. And, There's not one that you prefer personally, like uh, just in terms of just like utility wise, like grubs could help. I, I like the pushing. grubs. I, I like okay. the grubs. Uh, if you, especially if you feel like in that second round you're going to be stronger like if you have a stronger level six uh if your mid laner is doing well early if your top laner is doing well early you, and you have a very easy path to get that second round of grubbins the five and six stacks of it are both exceptionally strong at getting a ton of early power and early gold into your team but it really just depends on if the mid and top lane are in a strong enough spot to allow you to contest that second round uh, and make sure you can secure both. Because if you trade three for three Grubbins, it's not amazing. Uh, you'd, you'd rather get enough of them if you are able to. But it looks like uh, Fiddle is going to be starting up this Drake. Talia is going to be moving it down, Ooh. suspecting something. On the top side, Prisma is going to make... An attempted gank, but there are far too many minions, and Urgot has dashed away. Yeah, Ward caught out the Amumu there, so it doesn't look like right now there's going to be a big trade as Drake goes to the Fiddle. Yes, indeed, and while that whole thing was commencing on bot lane, yeah, they're going to get the dragon down there. Uh, Amumu was doing a great job of counter jungling, you know, taking the farm away from Fiddle, kind of getting ahead a little bit here, 47 to 40. Still no kills at seven and a half minutes. Like I said, this is going to be a pretty slow game. Uh, no one really wants to kind of fight the other one. You know, Shen and Urgot, kind of a different story. Urgot's going to always be the initiator, the instigator here. The, there's about a 17 farm difference between the two. So even though there's no kills, he's about one kills worth the gold up. But really not that big of a gold lead between these two here. It's actually in favor currently of Ethereal uh, because the Amumu is doing so well and the Caitlyn is uh, doing well also against Sivir down there in the bot lane. So, you know, they have the the pokier comp between the Lux and the Caitlyn here, but Sivir and Karma are just as pokey between the Ricochet, uh, you know, and between the Mantra. And hold on one second. Well, in the mid lane here, flashes yep. forward, and that is a kill. First blood given on over to uh, Akira there. Yeah, Akira getting a really solid, ba uh, essentially a solo kill. Fiddle did come in and flash and throw out a rake there, but it really <laughs> wasn't a whole lot of extra utility or damage coming in. It was primarily just Akira operating the Orianna very effectively here. Uh, two flashes were blown for one. So he didn't this even does... hit anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Ah, uh, he didn't hit anything. So the flash was entirely for moral support. Uh, that's unfortunate. But hey, uh, Fiddle, he has flash built into his uh, ultimate. So just... Unless you're doing some spicy fear extensions, which you should be doing if you're playing Fiddle, uh, you are not going to get a whole lot of value out of your flash, as long as you're in the right spot. Uh, but yeah, for the time being... The game has continued to slow down a little bit here as now uh, Caitlyn and Lux have found themselves a little bit of breathing room to look and potentially start cracking these plates. Uh, you definitely want to see more plates going into the Lux Caitlyn lane. Obviously, it's a bit tougher because Ricochet just clears waves so well, but you would have expected maybe some more plates for this lane, but it's not been too terrible for them because the CS is definitely in Minami's favor. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're doing phenomenal CS-wise. I mean, that is a 25 CS lead. I mean, there's not much you can really also do in this 2v1. It's bad enough. Uh-oh, that is an unfortunate oh, no. snare. Mm, yeah. And then the last second flash when the auto attack already commenced. I hate it when yeah. that happens. Yeah, that is going to be the flash of hope 
Flash is not oh. great. Oh, we have a Grubbins stolen right here. We could still see a full six stacks if Prisma can get them. Uh, five, actually, in Prisma's pocket. That's all he's really looking for there. So although Pyrox, uh, Procyon, and Prisma will go down to the Grubbins, Atomic having to flash away. These Grubs are angry. They want vengeance. Uh, five Grubs do still go over to Prisma, and that is the break point they want to hit if they want to make the most of these Grubs. Yes, indeed, and that is a kill also being picked up here by Atomic in the top side. He's already about, like, 15 farm ahead. He's been constantly ahead of the Shen uh, at the moment here, and getting that one kill definitely solidifies a little bit more of that lead. Uh, this is still in the gold favor of Ethereal, though. Uh, you know, for the most part, we have a kill on the Caitlyn, we have a kill on the Talia, and farm-wise, they're looking pretty solid, not gonna lie. Uh, you know, Amumu was doing pretty well for a while there, you know, still about 12 to 10 farm ahead most of the time consistently, uh, but Fiddle, you know, is lacking a little bit thereof, but that's where Urgot kind of makes up for that lack thereof, because mm -hmm. uh, even though they lost the majority of the grubs, still being able to secure one of them, not bad, and he got in a kill and an assist as well, so he's kind of spreading that gold around for the team, because uh, I believe that other kill was picked up by Oriana there. Yep. Yep. Uh, well, it actually went to Karma, it looks like. Uh, really? Bida, yeah, Bida got that second kill there in that fight. Which, honestly, of all the supports to get a little bit of extra money, I don't mind Karma getting it. Uh, she has been hit by a couple of nerfs recently, but overall still has been a very effective, you know, a, a poking and utility support. So her getting a bit of extra gold, uh, you're not going to complain that much. At least right now. Uh, it allows, gives her a bit more power, a little bit of oomph in this bot lane where they really do need it to contest Lux and Caitlyn. Let's oh, see. Oh, hold on one second. Okay. We have a nice yeah. little engage here Dang on the mid lane. In the mid lane, Prisma is going to be landing the double banish toss. Flash is going to come out, but those rocks are being thrown in the bot side. We have a crow storm being dropped down. Double fear, double flash. But here comes the return fire. Min Minami's looking for one more auto, is able to find it. And now coming in is the Weaver's Wall. Ghost Fingers not going to be able to get caught by that, but will still be in danger as the seismic shove will go through. Flashes are going to be blown right now. Fiddle will be going down as the surprise party has been turned on its head by an uninvited guest. Amumu will lock that one down for Velsus, for Velsus as they pick up the Cloud Drake here. Wow. That was that was an amazing uh, engage there from Ghost Fingers. Uh, you know, they definitely were caught off guard, but they had the heal, they had the flash, they had the ability to uh, get out of there, and then just immediately turned the uh, the whole game around with that binding and then Lux ulti combo. That was a lot of damage that was thrown onto them, and uh, you know they had to back off from that point forward. And then Talia following up as well with her ulti, not quite able to lock the uh, the fiddlesticks uh, unfortunately on that side of the map there, but just at least able to stop him from entering into the lane and getting away completely. Um, you know, Amumu had a really close bandage toss, but was able to follow it up with another one just to get a flash out of him. So, still, I would say very effective from both teams. And it's still relatively low scoring Ooh. as well. Oh, hold on one Atomic second. Atomic Rider is going to be in a bit of danger right here, waiting for that second bandage toss. Ooh, just not close enough. Not enough movement speed on the Amumu. No boots in pocket yet. So, Urgot able to just narrowly walk out of that one. As on the bot side, we cracked a lot of plates, and we're going to be cracking this first turret here. That extra damage from the five Grubbins coming in very much there as the Shockwave will collect Velsus in the mid lane. A very pretty effortless looking solo kill from Akira once again in the mid lane. Very good from the Orianna, but the game is still currently in Flannel's favor, especially if they get this. And uh, in the mid lane, while we were watching the Herald be secured by Prisma, Minami was able to take out Akira. Wow. Okay. Well, 
Lots of movement happening across the board right here. Communication kind of right now on point for Ethereal, but Nameless answering with a you know, couple of things of their own here. Locking down... Uh, no, I'm sorry, they didn't get the Rift Herald, uh, but you know, they were able to at least move forward there. Wow, nice dodge. Kind of an ineffective Rift Herald. Not the same as it used to be in a great no! ultimate fiddle sticks. Oh, Prisma! We're gonna be taking their driver's license after that one as they will be going down first. Root doesn't quite go through onto Procyon, Ooh. but the ulti does, the Stand United does keep Set's Appreciator alive as the Herald is just dazed and confused, wondering why it didn't crack into that turret. That is embarrassing. He, and, I, I, one of my favorite changes has been driving the Herald, uh, but it's also one of the most embarrassing changes because it's one of those things that it's like, surely you can't mess this up. And then when you mess it up, it's just depressing. So <laughs> anytime I hop into it, I just don't even run down the lane. I just run straight into a sidewall immediately. It's like, all right, never mind. Yeah, I can't believe they missed a stationary target as the shockwave will hit Ooh. nothing there as the damage will go down onto Bida. The Lucent Singularity is not that ability. The final spark will not quite land onto Bida. There is on the top side, we have a flash coming out from Atomic Rider as Procyon's gonna lock down the Urgot, but he's pretty tanky, not tanky enough to survive all that CC and Shred coming in from Prisma. That'll be another kill going over to the Samumu, who has rushed Leandres, by the way. Yeah, that's a very, very strong Mumu. He's tanky, he has AP now. Uh, you know, Shen is really the frontline tank person uh, for this team, but that's really all they need currently is just Shen. I mean, that's a lot of damage that we saw coming in from Lux and Caitlyn on the bot lane. And Amumu has just been ultra effective right now. Four out of seven kill participation, along with that bot lane, uh, you know, same thing, four out of you know, out of seven kill participation for those two. But I think he's really the MVP right now. He's been doing a great job setting up the lanes for these amazing ganks, getting them ahead. And even though Shen is down by about, what, 40 farm currently, mm -hmm. he's still been super effective in this game. He's been able to get some really big taunts down uh, and then set up for the rest of his team to go ahead and do the damage. Look at that, three and zero on Caitlyn. Oh, oh, and four on Lux. I mean, they're doing exactly what they need to be doing as a five-man squad. Yeah, this is what they want to be doing. And this is a very strong five-man from Flannel Ethereal. Any team composition that has a Mumu in it is going to be very proficient at these big skirmish-heavy fights. Uh, and, were... it really, and it really oh. is going to come down to whether or not, again, as I was kind of talking about in draft, you know, a century ago, it's we're going to have to start looking at Ghost Fingers to do a little bit more on this fiddle here. It's been certainly underwhelming compared to what i was especially i was hoping to see from the pick uh, i was kind of hoping to see a little bit more come out from the fiddle here he's found a crow storm that didn't amount to anything but after the crow storm went down it's just really been kind of slow for the fiddle uh I will say, from my personal experience playing Fiddle, you want to basically ult off cooldown mm. uh, as often as you possibly can, because that is your big tool to make things happen. Uh, right. Even if you can save it for a fight, if you know a fight is not going to happen anytime soon, just click the ulti button. And we may see a surprise party being thrown for Set Appreciator, who's going to be wandering into three people. The fear is eventually going to land. The root's going to go down. CC is going to go down as well. But here comes the return fire from Set Appreciator, who's staying alive as Procyon and Prisma are going to get caught by the shockwave. Minami taking quite a lot of damage as well. C doing a ton as much as they possibly can as Velsis is going to arrive. The bandage toss will toss Akira into the bin. And now Procyon going to be on their lonesome. But ooh, C hitting everything right now. But you can't escape from the wall woven by Talia there. A story woven, a kill picked up for the Talia as everything goes Flannel Ethereal's way in a fight that looked so bad to start. That was a very, very rough fight because all Atomic had to do was be present and that could have been theirs 100%. Uh, Atomic just, for some odd reason, ran straight to top lane, 
He has teleport available, so I don't know why he was even rotating like it, that. It's the top lane or brain disease. You you just you gravitate naturally towards top lane. That's how it yeah. works. And you were saying earlier, like Fiddle kind of feels like the off pick here. I feel like Sivir's really the off pick here. Uh, you know, once again, the hyper carry that is Jinx uh, wasn't banned, wasn't picked by the other team. Uh, I felt like uh, I do feel like Jinx would have been like the perfect answer for this kind of composition. They're looking for the damage. They're looking to be aggressive. Uh, you know, Karma and Sivir were doing a great job earlier at you know somewhat suppressing the Caitlyn. Uh, and keeping her out of lane, she's still ahead by about 30 farm currently and up three zeros. So it's about five zero technically in terms of kills or in terms of gold. But, uh, uh, you know, it, it's just rough to see. And, you know, Urgot being the main source of damage right now, he has the Black Cleaver. He has a pickaxe and two long swords. Uh, I don't agree with the steel play caps. I would go with Murtred just because of all the CC and mm -hmm. the magic damage coming out of, yeah, you know, a little here. Not yeah there's yeah. way more magic damage Ton yeah talia lux like there's tons of magic damage there so i don't know why he's going with the steel play caps but hey these are just little things that we can see also on the outside here but um you know there's a couple of corrections that they can make i'm liking the pressure he's at least putting up on top side still very aggressive he's up 60 farm over the shen uh you know even in kills shen cannot really do anything without his teammates being present there so he can continue just pushing that into lane and you know, being that 4-1 split push. Or he can walk right into them, too. That is good. Could have yeah, done so in the other fight. <laughs> yeah, the uh, as the the old top laner, you know, when you have a lead, especially uh, with a Shen who's a champion, is designed to abandon top lane, uh, you know, sometimes you just pick up a hole breaker and hope for the best. Uh, exactly. The problem is, is I don't feel super optimistic about the four-man squad that remains if Atomic Rider commits to a split style here as Velsus is going to be around uh, Prisma. Not going to land that first Bandage Toss, but he's got two charges as Atomic Rider is going to get locked up. We're going to see stuns go down. The taunt's not going to land, but you can't dodge the curse of the sad mummy what? as now we are going to have the call of the hunt. It's going to go out onto Minami here, but they aren't able to quite close the gap. The rest of Flannel Ethereal are walking down the river. Oriana is on the bot side, does have TP, but doesn't have any great space, spaces to go for it, as Nameless are just going to kite back to the mid, try and crack that turret, not quite able to get it, as once again, none of these decisions that Nameless are making are paying off for them. No, no, they are not at all. I mean, they got a tier one tower on the bot side. They're kind of prepared for the dragon. That's not up for another 40 seconds, though. So I'm not entirely sure what the game plan is here, but the communication is definitely in disarray right now for the side of Nameless. So they need to kind of pull it together, you know, have Urgot stick to the top side if he's going to do that. But I mean, if they're going to have four people, five people roaming and ganking on to the top side, they have to be doing something else on the map. All of them should have either been pushing in the mid, sticking to the 3-1 push or something. They had to get Ooh. more out of it than what they were able to. And... Now it's Baron at 23 minutes, starting by Ethereal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ethereal's going to be starting this Baron here. No vision, no real guesses that it's happening. Here goes the drying orb. So they do know that this Baron is in progress. The ward goes over the wall, but it'll just see a screaming death rattle of the Baron Nasher as the side of Nameless will take the consolation prize of the dragon but prisma is looking to make something happen here as now nameless oh. are potentially looking for a fight flash forward from karma going down in the front lines here the crow storm's gonna go in but he's gonna be taken down immediately the return fire from the shockwave will be enough to pick up one but now atomic rider and akira are limping out of this one and velsis will not allow that to happen atomic rider the only the solo rider here for the side of Nameless as the rest of the roster gets routed. I mean, hey, they got two of them down, at least the Shen and the Amumu, the two tanks. Um, that was a very bold move from Karma to flash right in the beginning of that fight there, <laughs> died instantly. I have no idea what the uh, goal was. I think it was to try to lock down the uh, the Caitlyn, but- Yeah, it was it a route, but why are we engaging with 
Karma root. What yeah. Why? That's you need a Nautilus problem. or a Leona if you're gonna be doing that. <laughs> Oh, jeez. I think that just is like a, a, a sign of the dire state of the composition here. Where, what is their engage? It's Fiddle. But Fiddle has not been finding these kinds of angles. And it's not like they don't exist. He just is not going for them. And it's kind of... I don't want to say... I don't want to be too negative. But it is kind of mildly frustrating as a Fiddle player seeing what could be some good crow storm opportunities just going south here it's not like flannel ethereal have set up insurmountable vision control it's just that these fights have not been going well for nameless yeah and i mean it's kind of difficult right now you know to climb this mountain this deficit that they've kind of dug themselves they're down by about 6k gold almost uh you know oh and four on the fiddle he only has one item comparative to two and a half items that Amumu has, plus all that magic resistance that he's now building as well, on top of the uh, Leandris that he picked up earlier. So, you know, it, it, it's just kind of difficult for him to do anything. Even if he did ulti, he's not going to be that effective, even though that would kind of break up their back line, stop the damage a little bit. He would just get blown up instantly by Talia or Lux or someone someone along those lines. But, uh, you know, the, the most that they can do right now, I, I think is just... Have Urgot stick to a side lane somewhere. He doesn't have teleport. He's already used it. That leaves... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and they can't oh. be getting picked off. That's another word of advice. Yeah, from Vida... Just one wander humble Casper. Yeah, uh, Vida wandering into... Okay, a good crow storm Ooh. does so much damage, but there's just no follow-up. And the fiddle is so far behind that it's not able to take anyone oh other than the support out as Prisma is looking to 1v1 the Urgot here, and he will be the one who will be destroyed. It's C on their lonesome. They need to, you know, the C right now is not able to wash away the worries of Nameless's roster as their base is starting to be cracked. The first inhib will fall as Vita is just going to interrupt Velsus' recall here, but certainly not able to get anything else. No, might be a little disruption for the time being, but she's just going to waltz right into the jungle and get a nice little back here. I mean, Ethereal is doing a great job setting themselves up, uh, you know, for their first victory if they play like this in game number two here. But, uh, you know, they're playing slow and steady. You know, they're not making, they're not overstaying. They're not pushing too far. I'm really liking the decision making overall from Ethereal, uh, you know, it coming into week number five here. So, uh, you know, they're just taking advantage of the kind of comp that Nameless has, which was, hey, if we don't get ahead early, we are not going to be doing well for the rest of this game. So they made sure to make, you know, to be in positions to where they can't be taken advantage of fully. They're not giving them the full capability of the Shockwave, even though some have been pretty effective. I mean, three and five, that's pretty good for Akira. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, Fiddle just picking up that first kill at, you know, 25 minutes, and that was off a really, really yeah. nicely timed Crow Storm. Wow, but that's a lot of damage, though, coming in from yeah. Urgot. Atomic Rider is gonna be oh, now in quite a bit of danger here as the rest of Flannel Ethereal has arrived to bail Minami out of that precarious situation. That's just gonna be the split push Urgot no longer splitting or pushing as Minami has turned the tables and will look to split push on their own. We'll see what the team can do as uh, I see several fiddles and only oh one of them is real and that fiddle is going to be Crow Storming Procyon what? who will go down. That is enough damage to kill the Shen. Uh, but that is a trade of top laners here. Meanwhile, Minami is cracking that... Uh, that inhibitor turret in bot side. Akira will go down to deal with it. Meanwhile, this next Drake soul point will go over to Flannel. Yeah, I mean, that was a pretty good move. I'm not going to lie. I was kind of surprised at the amount of damage that Crowstorm did to Shine up there. Doesn't have any magic resist, though, so that definitely yeah. makes a lot of sense then. Um... But still, great job for at least getting something on the board. And, you know, while there was a lot of members down on the bot side, they did a good job rotating, caused Shen to teleport. So that's one thing down for the time being. Uh, you know, so they're, they're trying to make the most of this 
kind of unfortunate situation that they find themselves in at the 30 minute mark but with that being said if they can just continue getting these super minion waves uh you know get some gold into their pockets and you know get some better items these team fights might start shifting in their favor you know they are kind of at a huge level deficit right now caitlin's level 16 and yeah that ergot is just being relentless yeah. though that's exactly what they need in order yeah, to win these fights a relentless engage but that crow storm was anything but as procyon will stand united for the shield here the weaver's wall is going to just be a you know maybe a uh, some sort of click there as now nameless know that this baron has started but they are a member down and into oh their jungler walking in as atomic he's gonna take quite a lot of damage but stay oh. alive as Bida will claim that kill it's now 4v4 call of the hunts coming out the cupcakes will clap the oh, feet no. of akira as now we have the ball in a good position, but the shockwave doesn't go and hit anyone. Is now set. Appreciator will take one out. Velsis will take out the Sivir. And once again, it's Akira and Atomic on the run as Nameless Ethereal continue to take everything and more this game. This is just, oh, it's not done just yet. Velsis has yeah, the spidey it's... senses going. Good night. Good night, unfortunately, Atomic. <laughs> that last couple of minions were following them all the way to the ends of the Earth. So that was a great fight, though. It was a little bit iffy. If that binding didn't hit from a uh, set appreciator there, I think we could have seen a potential Baron steal. But it was nicely secured by Prisma. Uh, and, uh, you know, the rest was history. The team fight definitely swung in favor of ethereal that lux ulti that final spark has just been absolutely relentless hitting most people i wouldn't be surprised if the most damage has actually been performed by the lux this game i uh, i mean yeah, been doing it's, a great it's job the here. it's the poke support you know it's uh i i do think Vels <laughs> i do think Velsus has been doing a lot of damage this game uh Honestly, I, all of Flannel have been pumping out incredibly high numbers, aside from Shen. So it's it, you're gonna see some pretty some pretty big numbers in oh the post game as Vida will be shot down by the sniper right here as Minami is gonna continue the assault on the turrets here. The siege continues on all sides, and it is merely a game of numbers as they have more of them in their pockets. And the game will end. Urgot will fall. C will run for the hills. And the Nexus will explode in favor of Ethereal. Yes, indeed. I mean, that was... It was really, you know, hard fought. Very slow game starting off. Nameless was taking their time. They were planning things out. Uh, you know, First Blood wasn't until like seven minutes in. And then Ethereal was like, wait a second we just do more than them we do way more in damage the lux is ridiculous she's hitting all her skill shots she's hitting the final sparks after level six it was kind of a completely different story and some of the crow storms weren't as effective as they needed to be early on as they were more towards the later parts of that game he did pick up a little kills uh you know later but i just not able to get that snowball early not able to get those uh you know early crow storms off on the onto the bot lane i mean it was what a seven and zero uh caitlin if i'm not mistaken yeah. something ridiculous yeah, <laughs> so caitlin had a caitlin had a lot of uh a lot of gold in pocket um uh, it was definitely a tough game uh as they started to fall behind their comp just didn't really have the ability uh, especially without those crow storms hitting as they needed to to turn the game around uh they lacked frontline they didn't have a hyper carry they didn't have a win condition uh it, it was sort of just all depended on a, a strong early to mid game that they did not find so uh, unfortunately nameless will be on the back foot for game two but the series is not over uh, I guess I don't know what the plan is with the replays. We do have a draft link for game two. I don't know if we want to look at that now or. Sure. If... All right. Uh, so we are we will be simulating the draft when we get closer to game time. So in the meantime, 
remember, we are having to play watch through replays, so we're going to wait for this game to get close to concluding before we hop back into the stream. So you have quite a bit of time uh, to, you know, go for go for a walk, get another sandwich, you know, treat yourself <laughs> to several sandwiches. And uh, we'll be back with more action in the draft for game two uh, in an undisclosed time. So stick around. League action coming at you eventually.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to Draft. It took quite a while as uh, the game, you know, not to spoil anything, is going to be a barn burner uh, based on the game time, at least. So we're going to be simulating the draft for you uh, piece by piece here that we will be seeing uh, the Seraphine going down. These bands will be uh, likely either targeted or just taking out some very easy, good buttons to hit. Mm. Uh, if I think of good buttons, I think of Seraphine. I think of, you know, right now looking at good AD carries. Uh, if not Jinx, then Zeri has been pretty popular. Uh, so we're going to see some pretty standard-ish bands. Uh, I would imagine here. Any bands from game number one that you would want to see specifically? I mean, Lux was extremely impactful there. I think Amumu also did a tremendously, uh, you know, phenomenal job there in game number one. Uh, you know, so a lot of that engage that they had on the side of Ethereal, I think, should be kind of met or answered in some regards. Uh, you know, or at least if they don't, if they don't ban it, then they should pick it themselves. Because once again, it kind of was appalling to not see a Jinx pick here. The Sivir was very interesting. Um, you know, they had Caitlyn picked right off rip, so I think the Caitlyn ban, very appropriate. They were very comfortable on that in game number one here. And we did see the Fiddle, even though it wasn't very effective early on, still proved to be kind of an uh, issue there later. So they, it looks like they are banning that on the side of Ethereal as well. So uh, we do have some targeted bans here. Zeri, always a problem. Seraphine, I guess you could argue is somewhat of a problem here, but leaving that mm -hmm. Maokai open, uh, yep. because I believe that was banned out last game from Ethereal. Yep. Uh, say, they said, okay, if we're not going to ban it this time, don't worry, we're just going to go ahead and select it. So yeah, Ma Maokai for, you know, two seasons now, you know, one of the best champs in the format. He, in this season, he's been more of a support than a jungler, but he can still do both. So as a B1 pick, his flexibility just makes the pick very enticing. So uh, I do like to see the Maokai come first. We're going to have a Senna lane going out for Nameless here. Uh, we'll see if they ended up picking their... Uh, sent a partner here in round one, or at least mm. right now. It looks like they're going to go for the... They went for the jungler as their second pick there, picking up the Sejuani, a really solid, stable tank jungler uh, that even if you don't have a lot of experience playing, you can still navigate to relative success. As we have the Misfortune getting picked up for Minami on Flannel ethereal which oh. i'm okay with with the maokai i'm not too upset jinx is not real uh we're not playing jinx apparently it's not a real champ no uh, jinx is not about a one but actually that's what i was going to ask you so you think maokai is going to be uh in the support or now that the lux has been picked do you think that's going to be a lux misfortune bot lane with a maokai jungle because uh, I know he's been pretty present in the bot lane, but Maokai Jungle still definitely a good one. Can set up those ganks pretty easily with the Nature's Grasp, uh, you know, at level 6 here, which is a great way for the bullet time to also be set up and introduced along with the final spark there. And it still gives them the range that they had last game between the Caitlyn and the Lux. Uh, so I, I think it might actually be a Maokai Jungle with the Lux mm -hmm. MF bot lane there. Um, and then, like you said, Senna being picked up. Um, usually it's going to be fasting Senna, so I hope that they have someone that is going to be farming and not have a Senna ADC here <laughs> on the side of Nameless, because that won't go very well, because you definitely need those souls and want those souls. Yes. Uh, you know, and you want to be lethality, so I kind of hope that's a Senna support pick. Um, but yes. Sejuani, like you said, overall, very, very good, very safe, tanky enough, provides great support, has great CC, and the Jax, I think, is going to be the top lane pick, so Sejuani is more than likely being the, the jungle here. Yeah, it would not surprise me to see the Sejuani jungle. Sejuani in lane hasn't, it's very niche. Uh, it could be like uh, Senna or Sejuani as the Senna partner, which would be interesting. Uh, I've seen worse, so I can't, I've seen people co partner. You know, I, when Senna first released, uh, my duo partner and I, we were playing NASA Senna 
in Botlin, which was very <laughs> farming Nasus with F Fasting Senna, which is very funny. Uh, no. It's not good, but it is very funny. Uh, so That's I've evil. Seen, I, I've seen weirder with uh, with Senna, so it, I, I doubt it'll be Sejuani's uh, support with uh, the Senna, though. It, instead, yeah, it probably will be jungle. And I think <laughs> taking Sejuani jungle here is very fine because at this point you kind of figure that Maokai is going to go jungle and yeah. uh, you can sort of suspect that one of Sejuani's weaknesses is being outpaced in terms of jungle clears and uh, Maokai and her are fairly close so it wouldn't necessarily she wouldn't be able to be outpaced counter jungled and removed from the game by a Maokai uh, but we do have the Ash getting picked up so we have the Senna Ash bot lane uh two utility-esque ad carries in the bot lane positions here is the rexai will be the pick here did get some adjustments on the live patch but that will be uh top lane rexai has been present so we'll and and we have yone because of then we have yone it yeah. is the, is the, <laughs> I, I just got out of a TFT game getting rolled by Yone. Uh, is is this TFT? What's what's going on? We have Lux, we have Yone. What's what's happening? Why why did we pick Yone? They're trying uh, to make a statement on the side of Ethereal, uh, in my opinion. You know, the Rex side, the Yone, the the MF, the Lux. That's a lot of damage. You know, they definitely mm -hmm. don't have the same front line that they had last game. The Amumu, the Braum, like they had a, a you know a nice thick front line to work with the Shen. Um, you know, but this game they're definitely going all the way in uh and you know now it seems like on the side of uh nameless they have a little bit better uh front line aspect between the jacks and the sejuani uh you know so and they're able to stop a lot of the hard engage that is the yone that is the rex side but uh you know they just have to be careful about their placement they have to be careful uh, about their positioning as well you know the vex it's just going to be up to the communication if they're able to collapse and answer because there were just more people last game uh available here for ethereal than there was for nameless like in every single one of those jungle fights um just the people rotated it, the fact that they were also ahead definitely helped but uh you know the early ones where it was just more even it was definitely more slow pacing once it started turning into those 3v2s and those 4v3s it's like okay obviously numbers are going to win uh in these circumstances here um but with the amount of engage that they have right now on the side of ethereal this is i think just a weight back and kind of play it safe kind of game for nameless they're down oh one they don't want to you know walk away here with absolutely nothing tonight uh you know and getting to a game three is going to put them in a better position obviously so that's what they're aiming for so i i hope they take heed of that warning i hope senna is definitely able to get some souls wait for the heavy engage i mean it's still gonna believe be maokai jungle i believe right and then mm -hmm. mf yeah i, Lux I would imagine lane? okay i, I, I would i would imagine <laughs> Uh, I guess it could be Maokai top. He hasn't gone top lane in a while uh, right. in terms of being a good pick. Uh, and I don't know if I would want to play that into Jax. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, but either way, you know, Nameless, as you said, they're playing a very slow game. And, you know, in a hypothetical scenario where this game goes to 40 minutes for some reason, uh, this... this uh, nameless roster could put up some serious pain but we'll have to see if they do that uh for right now we'll go to a small little break as we get things set up for game one so stick around we'll be back in just a moment
Hello, everybody, and welcome on to the Rift for game two of our series between Flannel Ethereal Esports and Nameless Rising. Flannel on the blue side, Nameless on the red side. I'm Becky Rita. Joining me tonight is Rye Lion. And clicking buttons is Owls. And we have a game two on our hands as Flannel looked very dominant in game one we'll see if they can keep up this energy going into game two here or if nameless have something to slow them down a little bit i mean they picked a really hyper aggressive uh you know you know champion uh select here they have the yon they have the mf they have the lux we saw how strong that Lux was last game with the Caitlyn, but with Caitlyn being banned out this game, you know, I think, you know, transitioning to the MF is not that bad at all. They have the double bounce from the bullet shot. They have the uh, bullet time as well from the ultis. They have good range, being able to slow. Uh, and surprisingly, they actually have first strike this game. So they're actually trying to be more aggressive. They want to get the damages out. So I definitely expect to see a lot of action this game. More so than what we saw last game, which was pretty slow until about, like, seven or eight minutes. Yeah, it's going to be a little slow, uh, I would imagine. Last game was pretty slow at the start. This game, we might see a little bit more action from the Maokai early on, although Sejuani does have some pretty strong early ganks, and champions like the Jax are pretty good at pumping out early damage, so... We'll have to see is in the bot side. We have a very early trade going between Voltrolic, Voltrolic and Set Appreciator as the Senna will be taken down decently far here. Uh, this is, again, the Fasting Senna with the Carry Ash. So the Senna is the support this game. They do reach level two first. And they're going to have control of this lane for a little while as Pro as Procyon is on the Rek'Sai top lane. So this is a pretty recent development from those changes they gave Rek'Sai. Uh, the second overhaul they've given Rek'Sai in the, the past year or so to try and make this champion at all relevant. Uh, it did work, uh, not how they had intended. She has been very good in top lane. So we'll see what exactly this pick can do this game. Hopefully we get a showcase of the strength of the Rek'Sai here is we do have a gank being set up by Ghostfingers, potentially. Yeah, Rek'Sai is just one of those, like, oddball champions, relatively low pick rate for a very long time. Don't really know how to play her, how to see her. You don't, you know, it's just kind of not really that much present, especially in the lower elos here, compared to other junglers that are much more effective, like Kane, Nocturne, things like that. So um but you know going to top side here she is like a really aggressive trader definitely built for that 1v1 aspect wants to go for that juggernaut she's like olaf a little bit or briar she was briar before briar was even a thought i think that's what they wanted to go with with rexai but they kind of went with a different route and then of course changed it several times but coming into the jacks though that might be a little bit rough i mean she is able to you know play it safe she has the heals and things like that and uh Jax, i think is yeah, playing it really well, able to go ahead and get a nice stun off, but the knockup in return is just able to, you know, stop the momentum, but then he just goes right back to, to it, you know? Yeah. All he has to do is farm yeah. it, wait for the E, and redo. Yeah, one of the big problems that Rek'Sai is going to be running into here is that Jax can uh, become... He gets dodge. He can just dodge the Rek'Sai auto attacks, uh, the enhanced auto attacks from her Q. So the damage that comes in from... Uh, those uh, Q empowered autos are just not going to really apply here. She's either going to have to delay her power. The Rexi either has to delay that power from those autos and give Jax the ability to free hit her, or she wastes her time. And we could see a gank coming in here as Prisma is going to be looking to try and get the twisted advance, but will be having to advance in the other direction back towards the jungle as the red buff resets uh, yeah. on ghost fingers there a little little unfortunate but that is all right as it looks like uh prisma will walk through the Ooh. scuttle vision and start up the grubbins here but it doesn't look like ghost fingers is interested in contesting so 
Uh, first round of Grubbins. Look like they're going to go to Ethereal unless Ghost Fingers walks over. No, I don't think that they are, you know, caring at all in the world about Grubs right now. Or they just didn't notice that they walked over the uh, the Scuttle. That's completely, uh, you know, possible here. And, you know, looking uh, right now, I just want to take a look at the CS difference uh, between each of the laners. Jack's doing a phenomenal job, up about 13 CS over the Rek'Sai. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, the MF is up about 15 CS or 13 CS, I'm sorry, uh, over the Ash here. So kind of an opposite side of the map. Nice little gank from Maokai. But uh, I think Rex is a little bit too low, but doesn't care. Actually, goes all the way in, oh, flashes forward. No. And does get the first blood. That's yeah. Yeah, kind of that was what. Uh, uh, I don't think <laughs> Rex wins those. Uh, yeah, that was certainly a choice decision from uh, Procyon there, taking the tunnel in to get the knockup, but Jax had quite a lot of HP. He was healing up. He had he has biscuits in pocket too. And the only damage you have is from uh, Rek'Sai base abilities and uh, Maokai with nerfed base damage numbers early on. So yeah, it doesn't surprise me that Jax is able to take that one pretty easily. Uh, in the 1v2, and it's gonna give Atomic Rider another pretty significant lead here as we have oh. the... Ooh, the Vex ultimate does not quite surge on to the bot side of Flannel Ethereal as they're able to step away there, but the Drake will go to Nameless. Yes, indeed, and I didn't even notice this till right now. It's actually a Grasp of the Undying um, Jax up there, so he just wants to go ahead and do short trades. He doesn't have Lethal Tempo, he doesn't have Conqueror, so he's not trying to get the elongated team fights. and, uh, you know, as time moves forward, it's just going to put Rek'Sai more and more at a disadvantage, you know? She's not really able to to engage in these extended team fights. She has a Bami Cinder uh, compared to a Sheen and a Grass proc that is Jax, so... It's going to be kind of rough in these short trades, which is exactly what Jax wants. Uh, Atomic Rider wants to jump in, get the grasp, get the sheen proc, hop right on out, wait for the reset, do it again. And, uh, you know, and they have all the time in the world. It's kind of been like a, an island up there since the season 14 commenced for Topside. I love the changes. I'm not going to lie. I think they're fantastic. Uh, kind of cements like that loneliness up there that top laners should feel because that lane is a garbage lane. <laughs> I hate yep. that lane so much. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, you sound like somebody who played top lane for a little bit and suffered up there. 100% uh, accurate. Yep. Did you look at my special history? <laughs> uh, I, I did not, but I, I can tell as another person who played top lane for a little bit and suffered up there. Uh, for the first split I played and did amateur play, I was uh, a top laner, and it was awful. I hate top lane so much. Wow. It, it hurt me so emotionally. I, I had to start playing jungle to cope. And, right. <laughs> you know, that's that's really a dire situation if you're playing jungle for emotional support. Uh, I went to AD carry. I was like, I'm done with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another, another, yeah, another, another <laughs> role that definitely uh, doesn't suffer at all. It's AD carry. Uh, that aside, right now, uh. The game slowed down a little bit here as Atomic Rider is going to be looking to get a kill here. Rek'Sai will have to uh, take the tunnel, dipping into the brush, getting away from the jacks. But this lane is really not good for the Rek'Sai here. And it's about to get a whole lot worse as there are two other gamers up there looking to just make Procyon a non-factor this game. Yes, indeed, and if not Procyon, then Prisma at the very least. They did give up the first set of Grubs. They don't want to give up the second set here. Nice bullet time, though, on the Voltrek. Oh, Melsis oh. is going to be looking to go in with the Fate Unsealed. Oh, They're going to wow. have to go back to their soul oh. uh, in just a moment. They will pick up one with the dash. A C is on their lonesome as Melsis is just waiting. Oh. We'll dash over the wall, but C has the wow. movement. And Velsus isn't quite able to close the gap. Meanwhile, on the top side, we have a solo bolo going over to Atomic Rider. And now Prisma's going to be in danger here around the Grubbins as Ghostfinger's going to lock him up with the uh, Glacial Prison. 
as now Prisma will be able to dip away here, has to burn the Nature's Grasp. Velsus does walk in as, you know, just to get a little bit of damage with the uh, soul binding there, the unbound souls. As that a, was amazing. Yeah, that was quite a, quite a uh, great escape from Prisma, who has just oh. opted into after what? Uh, Never mind. Uh, what? Uh. 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 Huh. All right, you're the color caster. Break that one down for me. What's the thought process? Uh, that was definitely uh, overstaying and a little bit of greed sprinkled in with uh, a little bit of greed from Prisma. Uh, <laughs> definitely so wanted those grubs. Uh, you know, a little bit too bad there. Sejuani, a lot healthier in that aspect. We saw what she just did with the Glacial Prison. Uh, you know, you could have at the very least thought, hey, maybe she's going to face check or ward or something because she's in a much better shape than I am. Uh, and that is going to be yeah. grubs at least given on over two nameless they're they're in a much better position this game than they were last game four and one now on the map up by about 1k gold 91 farm to 60 though in the top side and almost the complete opposite on the bot lane there 89 to 63 in favor of the adc on ethereal so uh this is definitely going to be very interesting around these team fights and slightly in favor of yon as well with a kill and up about 20 farm himself i mean Ethereal's looking very, very good entering into the mid game as we speak. I mean, Vex trying to be effective, getting some, uh, you know, potential ganks off, but not really able to secure anything in terms of assist or kills even. But at least Jax is able to hold on his own. You know, mm -hmm. two and zero on the top side, one and zero, uh, which was a fantastic outplay, by the way. And hold on okay, one second we have here. The nature's grasp is going to be going out. It will root up the vex but not a whole lot else as ghost fingers is going to be looking to try and get an engage on will be locked up locked down and not able to get a whole lot else out it's going to be pretty low great glacial prison will lock down velsis as they will just be able to successfully disengage there off of that one but the drake still goes to flannel ethereal as uh -oh, now, oh arrow. no, it looks like somebody uh, stepped up a little bit too far once again as uh, Prisma oh, Sire oh. <laughs> will go down uh, once again by being very in a position that they probably shouldn't be in. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the Maokai right now, like going deep into the enemy jungle, you know, with 20% health going and trying to get the grubs. I mean, definitely has to learn their limits on this one. You know, this could be the victory high that he's feeling from game number one here. But now look at the score. One to five overall. That is still a 1k gold lead uh, in favor of Nameless currently. But you're not in a really good position to constantly be giving up these easy kills, especially to the carries. Uh, like Ash and Jack. So uh, he has to be mindful entering, you know, around the 14, 15 minute mark here. We have, uh, you know, first items that are going to be built by the ADC and top lane here soon, and they're significantly further ahead than their oh. counterparts. Uh, I'm watching this top lane. It just looks so unplayable for Xi. Like, yeah. what, what do you oh, do? What, what do you do? I, that's a great question. You can't walk up, you can't trade, you can't actually poke you just lose it i i guess rexi top is not something that i really have played a whole lot of or against but i have played a, a quite a bit of uh jacks back in the day uh and i know which which matchups are unwinnable for the person playing into jacks and this just looks like one of them as ghost fingers is going to be fighting velsus right now the uh, Soul will be unbound as Velsus is looking to get a little bit of damage here, but the shadow shadows are going to surge as Velsus will be taken down. Prisma Sire going to walk away from that one. The reset shadow surge does not land, but that will still be a pickup for the Vex and Sejuani there in the river. As it yep. looks like this Herald will be the next potential target here. But oh, the bot boy. side of Flannel have uh, wandered up to the mid lane to help out. Yep, as their mid lane did fall earlier, Yon, I mean, finally getting up onto the board here with one assist, Vex. Uh, you know, is doing a great job doing what she can into one of the Wind Brothers. I, You know, the double crit, definitely my two least favorite characters to go up against, the Yon and the Asuel. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, 
playing it safe, not having any deaths into them, uh, especially at 15 minutes, I think is a personal victory uh, all on its own. So I definitely commend Akira here on the Vex play, even though she's down a little bit in farm. Uh, you know, not giving up any early kills is definitely really big here. So, uh, you know, keep playing it safe and going across. Hold on one second. Yeah, Jack. we have oh, three people wandering up here. The final spark will not land. Uh, Prisma won't be able to get in range. There's no damage. And Jax is fine. He's sitting very pretty up there with the Triforce completed already. That is quite an expensive item to already have in pocket this quickly. So as we oh my goodness. Enchanted Crystal Arrow lands true as Akira will collect Minami in the mid lane. Uh, but being collected on the top side of the rift will be the Herald, which goes over to Flannel Ethereal. This is a completely different uh, nameless team than we saw in game number one. The communication is on point. They're doing very, very well in terms of collapsing and rotating. I mean, this is exactly what you want from uh, League of Legends at any point in time. And we did not see this at all in game number one here. So I'm glad that they had that nice reset coming into game number two. They're focused a lot more and, uh, you know, they definitely are going for oh, blood. Yep. Oh my god. Elsus will get taken out in the river. Was just kind of presumably walking out to maybe check, see what's going on, maybe get some vision, maybe get that scuttle, uh, and was just taken out by a four-man squad who just so happened to be there. Prisma will smite away that red buff, so it is secured away from Nameless here as Procyon continues to uh, uh, it, it, uh, threat, threaten uh, Jax. I don't know if Jax is particularly bothered by the Rek'Sai's spinning in lane. It, it seems not very. Uh, Jax's spinning just happens to be stronger, as it turns out. The top lane turret will fall, and we do have a fight that is just going to go over to the Jax here. Procyon going for that tunnel. It could go through. Oh, Ooh, my God. Yes, narrowly dips away from that one as the bullet storm will not be able to take out that Drake. But now we have a potential fight here. It's four on four. No TPs coming in from either top laner, but it's just going to be Prisma left to the wolves here, or maybe the boars, but will flash away. Sa Shadow Surge does not land, and Flannel Ethereal are able to disengage out of that one, get out of dodge, and only really, you know, only really lose that Drake uh, as top lane is becoming more and more of a, uh, a situation that has been going sideways. Yeah, that is like the most polite way to put that. Up by 66 farm currently, 2-0 and o on four different champions. Everybody except for Senna currently is completely unkillable right now. And, uh, you know, Senna has just been doing phenomenal work. Poking, has four assists doing what she can, ulting, getting those shields up across the map. I mean, this is a fantastic team. I don't know what has happened currently to Ethereal. Uh, this was his, supposed to be a super aggressive early onslaught team. They were going to look for kills. They were going to look to engage and just get in their face. But I don't know what happened. The, the, the tides turned or, you know, the, the plans fell through or they just decided, you know what? We're not going to engage. We're just going to play back. Let them engage into us for some odd reason uh and and then we'll go for there uh go from there and then yeah. as you can clearly tell it's one to eight they're up by 2k gold 3k gold i mean what can they do yeah it's it's not like flannel's team doesn't have the kinds of tools to punish engage uh maokai uh, nat uh, nature's grasp is the best ability in the game so it, it is one of the best buttons you can hit in any situation so that alongside a bullet time uh, and, you know, a good light binding. It can definitely punish an over-aggressive engage if Nameless are the ones who take the initiative here. But considering the champions that they have, you have the Yone, you have the Maokai, you have the bullet time. Why aren't you taking some of those 
more aggressive moves. And I think at this point, it's just because they're playing kind of scared. They fell behind a lot faster than maybe they expected. And now they just aren't sure what the play is. Here comes mm. the Nature's Grasp. It will will land because it is the best ability in the game on it to the Senna here. We're just going to see if it oh, can kill. Not quite enough damage from Velsis. And now Prisma is going to be left on an island and that is not an island they want to be on they are torn to shreds ravaged by the nameless roster this is incredible communication by nameless a very very different team i just talked about this but look at that teleport that came through not only that senna yeah she got caught up by the nature's grass but just the, the timing, the patience, and, you know, just being able to focus and not lose your cool in that situation as well. Able to go ahead and get the mist up, get out of dodge, and the rest of the team was able to clean up from there. That was phenomenal by the Nameless uh, on that engage there. And I don't know, man, like, they're looking so good. You know, up by 3k, they are in complete disarray on Ethereal. Uh, once again, two and zero, three and zero, and everybody just look at the items. Two items almost completed on every single person. One and a half. Anna <laughs> might be able to kill uh, Rexai all on her Senna own. Is She's level eight. Rexai. She's five I... levels down at Rexai. It's leaving. Rexai said, like, I am not messing with you because when there's one of you, there's more of you. Five levels, and he said, I'm out of here. Oh, not dealing with this. Rexai, what are you doing? Why are you driving this? No, I need this you tower. Okay, we do get the tower. Uh, we will likely trade our lives for it. The stun's oh, yeah. gonna go down. Here comes Sejuani. Yes, that will be a trade of your life for a turret. Is it worth it? That remains to be seen. And uh, yeah, uh, Rek'Sai does get something back there. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, the side flash from Velsus to dodge the Shadow Surge, but it does not matter as Akira is able to go in and pick that one up with the flash of their own. Man, Fate Sealed still being held on to. No opportunity at all to use it. Either he had to use it to dis disengage and get out of there, but he chose to flash out the ulti. Smart man. Um, but with that being said, the rest of Nameless is just gonna make their way on over to the Dragon. Put them on soul point. Jax is definitely able to go ahead and 2v1 flashes out of it with I, ease. I'm surprised he flashed. But I feel like you do I mean, he doesn't have a lot of MR, so maybe he thought he, he felt a little threatened by Lux. Mm. And I guess it's better safe than sorry, but I I maybe that's that's why I was not very good in top lane. I would have gambled. <laughs> I, I would have been like, yeah, I don't need to flash here, and then died and been very confused. After giving yeah. over a thousand gold to Lux support, it's uh, just but... it's just cooldowns. It's like five minutes is five minutes, you know. If we even do make it five more minutes from this, oh. because I mean they are on a roll. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah, definitely. At this point in the game, with the kind of lead Nameless have, it would be really absurd to see this game go on for another fifteen minutes, for instance. Uh, we'll we'll have to see if that does happen. Why why it does happen? Uh, but. You know, maybe we'll we'll have to see what the flannel roster can do to kind of stem the bleeding here and pull something back. They have been pretty decent uh, in terms of some of these objectives. They have taken a couple towers. They did get three of the Grubbins. They got the Herald. So they also got a Drake. So we do not have Soul yet in mm. the pocket of Nameless. And it's not like they don't have tools to make fights uh -oh. happen. They're going to be looking to make a fight happen onto Atomic Rider right here. They'll be going unstoppable by the or not unstoppable, oh. unattackable. Minami will step forward. The lockdown will go in. But Atomic Rider continues to dodge, but it's still 1v4. As oh, Atomic Rider jumps in and dunks on Minami right here. Looking to try and close the gap. Shield comes out from the Senna as Atomic Rider continuing to stay alive, but jet not very much longer as the shutdown will go over to the Lux as Velsus is looking to get that kill onto Senna they were looking for a few minutes ago, actually securing it this time as two kills go over to the side of Flannel. Okay, you know, getting a couple more kills up and getting a 700 gold shutdown, unfortunately, 
that going to the Lux. Definitely not the one that you want to be having that one. Uh, you know, Rek'Sai could have infinitely used it much more. Uh, but that is okay. You know, that's still a little bit more damage in the pocket of Ethereal. You know, we saw once again what Lux was capable of last game. So maybe giving her a little bit of gold uh, this game might be what they need to come back and win this thing. But, um, you know, still in a very strong position currently, Nameless is. Baron is up. Teleport is coming through from Jax onto the Baron here. Everyone is making their way immediately over there. I just realized I muted myself to blow my nose. Uh, Velsus is on the uh, run right now on their own here. It is four to one. They try to uh, unseal C's fate, but their fate was sealed the whole time. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, the light blinding will land onto the dark mage of Vex and take her down. Another shutdown going over to the Lux, who uh, is... It, a luck support carry here we go this is league of legends folks this is the kind of game you want to see you know what you know fate of the world is in the hands of luck support yeah uh, that's is, this is the kind of game. gold that's oof that's rough yeah, that, yeah, this is lux uh lux has uh, all, more gold than rex <laughs> oh my god that is such a sad true statement oh no oh my god rex Rek'Sai no. is is so famished. Uh, but we'll see if they can't get a little bit more gold back onto Atomic Rider. I've seen this story before, and I didn't like the ending. Uh, mm. How it went for the side of Flannel, at least, with Atomic taking a kill in response. They are level... Atomic is level 16 here. Does have the level 3 ulti on the Yawk S. We'll be popping that. We'll be top popping the Counter Strike. Looking to Counter Act... The damage coming out from Procyon as Prisma and Procyon are trying to, you know, whittle him down very slowly. As now Set Appreciator is going to walk in, trying to provide some cover fire. Oh as God. now Jax, uh, we, uh, hey, five minutes passed. Jax flashed away again. It's, it's five minutes. So uh, <laughs> we, meanwhile, while that was happening, Minami is just killed by Akira. Uh, probably just one shot by you know, Vex combos. Vex does have the Storm Surge, has the Ludens companion. Uh, it is, it's this, this Vex does a lot of damage here and will be Shadow Surging onto Velsus who decided to engage on to the Vex. I think that was after they got tagged by the Shadow Surge. So they were probably thought they were dead anyways so yeah i don't know what's going on through the minds right now of ethereal i mean they're just kind of throwing especially since Jax has been able to prove that he can 3v1 two times in a row now except this time he didn't die um so that's kind of insane so it is going to be a 5v4 for this dragon i believe this is soul point yeah, yeah this is the name point. list yeah the steel's not going to come through it's going to be a very easy take there it did get down to 800 so if Prisma was able to get over the wall there, we could have seen a smite fight, but there just wasn't any way to get over the wall aside from burning flash. So they decide to save that cooldown, except that the Mountain Drake will go to Nameless. And now the Baron is next on the list. And if they get this Baron, you know, we could see the game end any time in the next uh, five minutes for sure. Or they can uh, go ahead and pretend like they're going to be getting Baron and do a nice little cheese. But everyone's kind of rotating towards the Jax here. Once again, like you said, he's level 16. He's got three levels over these guys. The uh, whole team is on him, and it doesn't matter. It's like, once again, it's like they're flicking just jelly beans at a tank, man. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that can happen to Jax right now. Yeah, this is not, this is not a TFT Jax. This is a... Summoner's Rift Jax right here. So the bullet time doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Faith Sealed will be negated by that exhaust, but we do have a pretty good fight for right now as Velsus is looking to get onto the backside using this cone intelligently there to take out the Senna. But now it is going to be 2v3 as another kill will go down. It's Jax on their own. Counter-Strike is popped. They're knocked up, knocked down, knocked away. And the entirety of Nameless are taken down by Flannel, only losing one. Wait, Flannel gets the Baron here. 
That's actually insane. The turnaround was great. That was the perfect bullet time by Misfortune there. It was just able to scatter everybody. Uh, and then also on the back line, we did have Yon, who was able to just lock down the Ash, lock down the Senna uh, with a perfect fate sealed onto the back line. I mean, this is exactly what you need to do. Divide and conquer. Get the team to separate and then go ahead and pick them off one by one, starting with the back line here. So they pulled that off quite well. Uh, they were able to secure the Baron, so that does put them in a nice little sieging opportunity here, potentially. Their base is still completely closed off. Jack's not able to successfully crack open the base in the top side or in any other lane. They still have at least the Tier 3 towers open uh, in the mid and in the bot. Uh, tier 2 still up in the top side here. I mean, it, they have to slow down now, and they have to wait for this Baron to uh, to pass in order to... In order for Nameless to get into another team fight and potentially just close it out from here. But look at the gold. It's completely even as well. And there's a seven yeah. kill difference between these two teams. Yeah, the gold has evened out now at this point. All those shutdowns have been picked up. The ob an objective bounty was picked up as well. And there are still bounties on the board for Flannel Ethereal to get. Never mind, they have fallen off now. But yeah, as you said, the gold has evened out here. We can get a look at where that gold is distributed right now. I am interested. Uh, yeah, it looks like, uh, yeah, Lux has picked up quite a lot of gold. 1,500 over the enemy support. Uh, the MF has out quite a bit of gold. Uh, there is a very sizable deficit for the Rek'Sai here. Uh, but not nearly as bad as it was just a few minutes ago. So, uh, yeah, it really is just now in kind of an even game state. The only problem, they still are fighting a team who did secure the soul. So they were good. The next fight around this Elder Drake is going to be a very definitive fight. And yes, Flannel indeed. Ethereal... Uh, they're in a position to actually contest it. Yes, indeed. Having this Baron up for just a little bit here does put him in a good spot, but that's only going to be for another about 30 to 45 seconds, so they cannot hold on to this forever. Uh, you know, three Mountain Drakes and a Mountain Soul is kind of big. They have additional shields, extra defenses, so that's going to put Sejuani, uh, you know, in a little bit of a better position than the Maokai, uh, even though she has been in a kind of better position the whole game here. Um, but let's see if they're actually able to get a pick off before uh, Ooh. this dragon. That's a lot oh, of damage on no. the Lux. Me and no oh my god. Caught out in the mid lane. It's not going to be 4v3 oh. right now as the shadows have surged, fallen over the Lux right here. But a hero will get taken down by Velsus, currently on a killing spree, trading one back, currently a two for one on this fight. It looks like Nameless are gonna continue to assault. We have Ash in the backside, looking to try and get something done. Ghost Fingers locking people down, but the Nature's Grasp will land onto three and dissuade any further assault. As yeah. It's just gonna be a two for one in favor of Nameless as the Elder Drake is a minute away. Yeah, that was, uh, I mean, it was a good look. Uh, by Nameless, they were able to capitalize, get the separation, got the kill on uh, me, not me. And, uh, and then, of course, the Vex was able to go ahead and get Lux or Set Appreciator out of the way as well, but not really able to effectively capitalize after the fact. Uh, you know, no one, no one was pushing lanes. Jax couldn't really teleport anywhere. Uh, and even if he could, Rek'Sai could just match it anyways, or so could Yon. Um, so it's just kind of unfortunate that they're not able to capitalize on those kind of pickoffs uh, this late in the game as of yet. So, you know, it's going to have to be like an all or nothing. The next team fight, I think, might be the last one here. Elder Drake yeah. is going to be up in just about 10 seconds. And holy yeah. cow, this is oh, a lot set of not damage. Appreciator is going to get taken out before the fight even started. But both supports are now down. It's going to be 4v4. C has arrived. Akira's on the back side, not throwing out a whole lot as Velsus is going to be locking people up. The bullet time going to shred that front line, but the back line is still healthy. C will shred Por Procyon right there. The Rek'Sai getting taken down, sent back to the void. Velsus having to recall, does have the TP, could keep the fight going if they're able to reset. Here comes the TP, it's in the pit. We have Prisma who is locking them down. Here comes the Nature's Grasp, Minami is there. No bullet time, but Velsus is angry. Prisma is able to dip away from there. C is gonna go down, Velsus dips back. 
but it's Atomic Rider who is still full HP and he is still fully armed and primed for danger as that is Atomic Rider cleaning this one up. They aren't quite able to stop Prisma's recall, but that is too alive for the side of Nameless and the Elder has their name on it unless Set Appreciator and Prisma have anything to say about it. There is no jungler here. A steal is possible. There is a ward. TP's gonna come in from Procyon to reveal that they have a ward on it. Uh, and they're just gonna try and stop the Elder here. Sejuani is around. Both teams looking to get this reset right now. Sejuani stashing forward. Procyon on the side, same with Prisma. There are no cooldowns available. Oh Glacial Prison goes wide as Prisma's trying to approach, trying to get the steal. We'll go for the flip! The flip lands tails for Flannel Ethereal as Nameless are looking to just burst down and execute the threats remaining. The Enchanted Crystal Arrow lands on the set Appreciator. The Shadows surge onto the remaining members of Flannel. The Nature's Grasp will lock them up, and Velsus is going to arrive, but with two members down and an Elder in pocket, Nameless are going to aggress to try and end this game. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that was just a really, really unfortunate. It's an early smite by Prisma, but I think there was like 100 health on it, unfortunately, it, it and was, then yeah, great 100, job. 200. It, it yeah, 100, 200. Yeah. It was just, it was just an early smite from Prisma. Yeah, it was just the, the nerves hitting them, and I mean, this is looking like a potential maybe game three here. I mean, they do have the Elder. They're able to siege out and take the tier three mid lane tower. I mean, Yone is still very strong, though. Let's see if he's able to do it. Does have Fate Sealed available, but that Elder buff is just too strong. There goes the final spark. Everyone separates. Oh, along the bullet time is a good one, but no. Yeah, Not the bullet time to is going to do a lot to the back side, but the front side is still pretty healthy. Although, actually, HP bars are very low. Fate Shield's gonna go out, but Velsus will be popped by the Elder Drake. Procyon's gonna try and do what they can to trade back, but the fire will breathe onto them. The fire breathes onto Minami. The shadows are gonna surge once again onto the side of Flannel Ethereal as Akira will slide into the enemy turrets. The Nexus turret, first one, will fall. And it's Set Appreciator Rem actually is standing tall right now. The solo Lux support, the one gamer left alive to try and defend this. It's 25 seconds before backup arrives. They oh have to try and clear this wave. They're going to get tagged by the volley, and that will be curtains for the side of Flannel Ethereal. That was a really valiant effort, I think, by Set Appreciator there at the very end, you know, trying to clear the wave, trying to just make sure, trying to get those death timers up as quickly as possible, but that is just not in the cards here. Nameless, both teams fighting for their first dub of the season here. Both teams coming in 0-4, remember that, into tonight's matchup, and both games not mattering at all, as it's all going to be reliant on game number three to see who takes this final and their first victory in the Gold League here. And, uh, man, that was a very impressive game by Nameless. Definitely not the Nameless that we saw in game one. Both games just very commanding victories for both teams so this last one is really going to be a 50 50. it could go either way just depending on who gets the early lead i think yeah and fortunately we will be getting into this game pretty quick uh so it'll just be a moment here while we will go to a quick break when we come back we'll be in the simulated draft for game three and then we'll hop right into the game three itself so stick around we'll have that coming at you after a break
Hello, everybody, and we are here for Draft of Game 3 in our series between Nameless, Rising, and Flannel. Esports Ethereal, uh, Game 3. It is, uh, for a three-game series, it has certainly been a long night. So we'll see what these teams have planned for this Game 3. Uh, Nameless looking like a whole new team in that Game 3, although they did had they had a rough fight around Baron at around the 30 minute mark. Nameless was still able to use their powerful pick tools to claim victory at the 38 minute mark. So we'll see what these two teams have planned here in draft. Anything you want to see aside from Jinx, which is not going to get picked. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, I want to see the hyper carry that is Jinx. I mean, Caitlyn's a great one, don't get me wrong. She has the damage, she has the crit, she has the range. You know, fantastic. And I'm an Ash main as well. I love seeing Ash on the map. But Jinx right now is just absolutely the super ultra meta. If you're not picking her, then you're banning her. And nobody has done so this entire game. We do see the Caitlyn ban, though, this time coming in from Nameless. Nameless is back on the blue side. Ethereal is going to be back onto the red side, just like game number one. And it is going to be a Zaya actually picked up here from Ethereal. And the Rakan, who the Zaya Rakan combo, very nice onto the bot lane. That is very strong. Haven't seen it in quite a little bit. And when it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We had the Sejuani last time from Nameless. Did phenomenal. Able to lock everybody down, set up. Uh, you know kills for the team especially onto the top side there um i think that's a fantastic pick and then we have the jacks once again one i'm gonna repeat myself if it ain't broke don't fix it jacks being locked in again sejuani being locked in again and i was hoping this is gonna be the third one the ash being locked in again this is a repeat of game number two my friend i mean it this is if this is where they're comfortable at, they were very successful last game. The communication was on point. I don't know if it was just the specific champions or what occurred from game one to game two for Nameless. But if these are going to be the same three picks, I'm 100% for it. Yeah. Uh, I do think these picks worked out really well for the side of Nameless in game two. Uh, Atomic a Rider in particular on the Jacks. There's just no answer to it during the game the rec side definitely didn't work out uh you know there was an a, a statistic that we had given to us where the champion from last game who had the most gold was Jax, and the champion with the least gold was rec side so yeah uh it was quite a good performance from atomic rider to say the least Mm. Uh, but this game, Flannel Ethereal have picked up the Zyra Khan duo and a Vi, a very stable, simple point-and-click jungler that will allow them to hopefully combat uh, the side of Nameless with a little bit more reliable early aggression than they provided in the previous games. The Dr. Mundo will be the pick into the Jacks. It's definitely better than what then rexi i would say it's still not great no. but in terms of jack's responses there are worse ones there are definitely worse ones i mean the passive from mundo is going to stop the engage from uh jacks at least one time you know but i think the passive doesn't come back before Jax has another E up again but as long as he's not autoing he's able to get those cleavers to land when he's uh, utilizing the stun, uh, that's really all that's going to matter because Jax is going to do the same thing. He's going to jump in, get an auto attack. He went grasp the Undying last game. I expect to see the same thing this game more than likely as he is, you know, going into a tank. Um, but, you know, we'll definitely have to see here. Uh, you know, I, the Vi is kind of throwing me off a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, I don't like the heavy engage. I mean, she's going to be able to get onto the back line and then what? They have a lot of things to stop her between the Jacks, the Ash, uh, you know, Swain. Azir's also able to push her away. Uh, so, you know, I don't think Vi personally uh, is my favorite uh, out of the side of Ethereal. Everyone else looking really, really solid here. I would have liked, I mean, not going to lie, I think the Maokai did just fine. I would have loved to see another Maokai game. 
Um, but they banned it out actually, so never mind. Haha, mm -hmm. jokes on me. Um, you know, if you are gonna go that hard in the paint, maybe like a Hecarim, someone that has a fear. Fiddlesticks maybe would have been a little bit better here as well. Just not the Vi, uh, personally. But um, you know, with that being said, it's we we have nothing but speculation. Game number three is ready, my friend. Do you just want to hop right into it? Yeah, let's just hop in. Alrighty. Okay, so game is going to start here. No intermission, nothing but the best for you guys. And I mean, just judging based off last game, three out of the five same champions here for Nameless. What are you giving them the odds of actually taking this home and getting their first victory here in the series? Uh, I think if we see a similar level of performance to the previous game, then nameless as long as they don't blunder too many fights mm. uh, around major objectives I, I feel like nameless are going to be able to secure this one but flannel have brought a very different roster to the game a very different team to the game this game than we saw in game two uh sure the vi it seems very maybe not maybe could be better but we do have a lot of really strong pick tools around that mid lane. So Akira is going to have to play pretty intelligently here. Going to have to play pretty on, on point to avoid getting uh, farmed off cooldown by the uh, Assault and Battery from Vi and the Charms from Velsus. So we'll see what the Azir can do. Uh, a note here, this is not... There have been some spicy Azir tech that has been coming out since... Uh, uh, I think it was a few patches ago. They gave his soldiers the ability to proc on-hit effects. Okay. Uh, a, a lot of on-hit effects, including uh, runes and keystones. So that okay. is why he has the fleet footwork this game. Because the soldier oh. autos now actually apply those. Uh, okay. So there's been some spicy tech. Uh, I've played with a Grasp Azir uh, recently. They did, I guess they did nerf it, but uh, it was very funny to see Grasp Azir. It was extremely effective. So uh, yeah, in the bot side, Flash did get blown by Bida, just throwing out those roots. Swain support here. Uh, Swain is a very much uh, a check kind of support to mm. laners who may not be playing around his claw very well. Because if you get hit by the claw, your life ends. So right. we'll have to see what Minami can do, especially now without Flash. It's going to be a lot harder to survive if any of those claws land. Absolutely. Yep, they have to be mindful. I mean, able to, to penetrate minions there and still get roots off is kind of a big thing. Uh, that Swain, you know, does want to take advantage of, especially early. And, uh, you know, with Ash, you always want to go pro approach velocity. So you're always going to get a little bit of a speed boost in order to uh, lock down these really important auto attacks here. Get those trades in your favor. And uh, as we were mentioning also topside, you know, Atomic Rider uh, is definitely coming off of a very big victory in game number two here. If I was Sejuani, if I was Ghostfingers, you had a lot of success, a lot of success in the top side, you know, repeat ganking there. And I think that's where the focus should be for Ghost Fingers. Uh, you know, bot side. Oh, hold on one second. We have a potential yeah, gank Prisma coming in from Vi. Charging up the punch. Oh. Neither CC lands as C says, see you later. And Ghost Fingers going to be going for the dodge, going for the slow. Slows are going to be ch ch funneling in onto Minami oh there God. as a double pullback from Beta will allow the Ash to secure another one incredible turnaround from nameless to kick off the game yeah that flash just dodging the viq even though the viq came after the flash i think she just released it a little bit too early mm -hmm. uh you know maybe uh, an anxiousness i'm not sure but definitely wanted to get that kill and unfortunately just barely missed it there and then great phenomenal kiting coming in from c on the ash uh able to run down get the kills uh, not getting both, unfortunately, as Swain was able to pick one of those up with just one little auto attack. I was seeing, like, <laughs> I've seen her just kind of hover, like, I don't want to auto because I know I won't kill him. And you know, it's just going to take one more auto from somebody else. Um, and 
unfortunately, that's just what occurred there. But still, getting two for nothing is really big. Up by one and a half K gold, getting an early pickaxe compared to the two long swords there is kind of huge. Uh, and the first Drake is going to be an Infernal Drake, so we're not going to get Infernal Soul, unfortunate. The yeah. early flash, once again, by Atomic Rider here. Q does land, but the autos don't. Yeah, the autos will be dodged. You know, Counter-Strike E, Jax enters an evasive stance for 2.5 seconds. Dodge, you, 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 we all know the drill. Another we all gank. Know. We have another gank coming in from Ghost Fingers as a root lands onto Set Appreciator. The slow from the Vision of Empire will lock Minami down. And it's just going to be a matter of minute, a matter of moments as C will take another kill onto Minami. This bot lane from Nameless are playing out of oh their minds God. right now. And the Grubbins are playing out of their minds right now, too, taking down the Vi right here. They're angry. They're furious. All right, one <laughs> Grubbin left. Will it get its kill? No, it won't. Uh, the poor Grubbins got outplayed. Got outplayed. Grading once again, the dragons for the Grubbins first off is just never, it never seems beneficial to me, like, at all. I don't care what matchup it is. The grubs are never worth trading the first dragon, especially if it's like an infernal, a hex, any, it doesn't matter. Cloud, like, I, I love dragon too much. It's a permanent, uh, you know, buff for the whole team. It does a phenomenal job, especially this early on, gives you the slight advantages that you need in order to get into that mid game stride. And that's definitely where Nameless is heading right now. Three and zero, they're up by 2k gold. They have a dragon now, like the, the AD carry has two out of the three kills. 100% kill participation, like they are perfect right now. 43 CS to 34 also on the top side, like every lane is currently winning on the side of Nameless. Yeah, it is not a place you wanna be if you are on the side of Flannel. And now we have a 1v2 right now. Uh, Atomic Rider being the focus of quite a lot of attention oh. once again, but this time Mundo does quite a bit more than, uh, who, never mind. The leap strike away from the Mundo will allow Atomic Rider to stay alive. The Ghost was popped alongside the ulti from Perseon. So it's just gonna be a matter of waiting for these waves to crash into turret as Atomic Rider will look to make more things happen. Ghost Finger sitting on a ward will be having to recall there as Flannel do know that the Szechuani has visited them once again in the bot side, and it's getting a lot harder for Minami and the Set Appreciator to approach here. Uh, they're quite da they're down quite a lot in experience. I would imagine that Beta and C are very close to their level six mark here. Yeah, they're probably around like a full, maybe not a full wave, but like half a wave ahead in terms Ooh. of EXP. Oh my, oh my god, so much damage. The Ignite's gonna tick down. It's gonna be Minami just oh taken god. out of lane once again. The AD carry from Flannel Ethereal is flailing right now. Not able to do a whole lot. Looking like, uh, you know, the release Zaya in TFT. No, just not doing anything. <laughs> Yeah, this is just a very, this is how strong and impactful Swains are. It's like having a Gnosis in lane, but except your hook goes through the minions. And uh, that's really unfortunate because Rakan can't really answer. He can jump in, can't get any of the return CC that he wants because the moment that he does, he gets slowed down. He gets something by, uh, you know, C and uh, Swain there. Um, and it's just a really unfortunate position. They're now 3k gold ahead almost on the side of Nameless. Coming in at nine minutes into the game. Jax is now just oh, absolutely no. demolishing yep. the Mundo. And that's going to be one kill. The first kill of many to come probably for the Jax. The Sheen, right as soon as he gets that, it's just a completely different game. Able to keep up and farm this time though. So that's... Oh, that's, oh, okay. oh. Prisma's oh. going to be looking for something. The... Uh, oh. size the uh, Sharima will go out push Prisma back a little bit mostly just to allow Akira to dip around and dodge away from the damage there both ultis were used by Prisma and Velsus the flash was traded by Akira so now the Azir will be particularly weak in the mid lane and a potential target of focus but 
is that really that much of a victory considering how sideways everything else around the map is going right now 3k gold lead for the side of nameless at just about 10 minutes into the game it's not looking great right now but there is still a lot of game left to be played a lot of drakes to fight over a lot of uh gromps to enter around you know there's yeah. plenty of league of legends left to play As, yes uh, indeed procyon looks like they're not going to be able to be playing league once again uh so there's so much attention around this top side yeah, I mean, that's where they should be focusing. I mean, I, I definitely would be doing so too. You know, no flash on Mundo at all is just asking to be repeated ganked, like 100%. Uh, you know, I know he has that little shield. It's, you know, like Malzahar and everybody else. One CC, but when you have a Sejuani and a Jax, uh, you know, and a an Ash Arrow potentially for later on, I mean, there's only so much that he can block. And, you know, he is, once again, doing a very tremendous job more so than last game in terms of CSing. He's 69 to 69, sweet. Um, you know, and he's only given up one kill uh, to the Jack. So he's doing a pretty good job at 11 minutes here. You know, Vi's doing what she can. I think she got the first set of grubs as well. So getting the second set uh, is going to kind of put them at a, you know, not the best spot, but not the worst either. Hold on one second. Ulti's being popped on both yeah, sides. Ulti Very nice is being team. popped on both sides. Ghost from Procyon along with those. Oh, oh no! With 50 HP, Atomic Rider will get that kill. Vi's gonna look to trade something back. The Flash Q doesn't land as Prisma will have to walk away in shame. Uh, pick up that last grub. Oh my both, God. both rounds of grubbins will go to the side of Flannel here as the second Drake goes over to Nameless. So. Work. Is, is is this worth? Yeah, hundred percent worth. Securing second Drake. I mean, yeah, Jax did die. Uh, he did fall to the Ari, but Azir's ahead in farm. He was able to go ahead. Uh, I think push the wave in. Uh, it, I I just definitely think it's worth. It. It's the first kill that they're able to get on the board as well. So not. It's better to get it now in early than have him go like 10-0 and give up like seven hundred bounty plus like three hundred. So a thousand gold overall. You know what I mean? Reset the gold now. Yeah, gold. Looking at the gold, it is still about 3k. Not a whole lot of time has passed. Checking out some of these champions here. Uh, once it, Vi is now the champion who is kind of critically far behind. And then I look Man. and I go down the champion list and it gets worse. Uh, as the Zaya is so far behind, and Dr. Mundo is actually potentially going to kill Atomic Rider here. Ow. The burn from the bombies will be enough. This is what you got to respect DT Munford. He does not care. He does kill you. But Prisma might be the one being killed right now as the Swain will pop his ultimate, getting a lot of burn down. He's able to keep it going. That's just going to be a burn on the Vi. Vito will go down instead of Preciator. Uses the quickness to quickly take that one. Ghost Fingers trying to kite back here. Will get one, but get taken down themselves. But Akira has arrived. It is looking to try and clean oh this one up as a Rakan goes that way. Uh, and goes into the waiting arms of a sand soldier and the waiting spear, I guess, of the sand soldier as it will impale the Rakan, clipping his feathers. And now Akira will slide to the left on into Minami. Not quite able to take the Zaya down, but will send her running to the hills as this bot lane turret is going to be going over right before 14 minutes, just barely. B with some wonderful, amazing kiting there, was able to get out of a very precarious situation. Didn't give up the kill, didn't give up the uh, little uh, bounty that he had as well. You know, still, you know, getting a couple kills up on the board now, nine to four, still down by about 3K, 4K gold in favor of Nameless, but they are not out of it by any means. As we did see the solo kill earlier from Mundo onto Jack, so Tide is starting to turn a little bit. Cease and desist, not available to kill that Jax, but that's okay, because they're able to go ahead and push him underneath tower. That's a tanky, tanky Mundo. Look at that. Heart Steel finished. Eclipse also onto the Vi. So with the first items being completed by everybody here, 
um, you know, as we transition to the mid game, not having as much of a front line, you know, Sejuani's not as tanky as she doesn't have a completed item yet. Uh, that kind of puts the advantage, I would say, in Ethereal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Ethereal are going to be looking to secure this Herald. They're kind of pinched in the pit right now. Jax mm -hmm. is taking that tower in top side. It's still a 4v4. Set Appreciator taking quite a lot of damage right now as Swain will pop the ultimate, approach four targets into the pit. The quickness will go down, but the damage goes down way faster. And it's just a, a bucket right there, a KFC full meal for the side of Nameless as Flannel Ethereal put themselves on a plate for Swain and Ash to gobble up. Yo, what the hell was that? Um, I, <laughs> That's I, a great question! <laughs> I, I don't know. They were just like, everybody into this tiny enclosed area that none of us can escape from at all, while Swain has an AoE that can constantly refresh as it's hitting us. That's the worst mistake that I think that you could possibly make at this position in, at this point in time. Uh, you know, they were able to give up the rift. Uh, they were able to utilize it onto the uh, mid lane here. They weren't able to get the tier two tower. That's good. But giving up four kills uh, just for a bot lane tier one tower and maybe a little bit of farm and experience for the Zaya uh, is not the trade that you need to be making at 16 minutes on a game three in this series. Both teams still looking for their first victory overall in the gold league currently and right now it's just slipping through the fingers of uh ethereal yeah ethereal's chances of victory are starting to look ethereal right now as mm. the gold gold lead gets more and more out of sorts we're nearly at 6k about 5.5k for the side of nameless here as it is just across the map gold lead gold lead gold lead and bida is looking to make some magic happen velsa's find a good charm lockdown's gonna go on to the ash but it's locking down and nobody with no follow-up on the back side bida dissuades and sends back the ash or not the ash the zaya and the uh, and the ari excuse me my a champions but this is an A game from the side of Nameless, perhaps even an S, maybe an S minus, uh, as <laughs> the entirety of the Nameless roster continue to funnel in it to Ethereal and take them down one by one by one. Yeah, that is just exactly what you want if you are the Nameless right now. I mean, six zero and eight on the Ash, three zero and four. Everyone had a great engage on an independent champion, but nobody on the side of Ethereal were focused. But wait a second, Mundo, not out of it. Definitely needs to uh, die just at a later point in time as well. Um, but, oh man, they are just constantly fighting Ooh. across this map right now. They cannot catch a break. The charm's gonna go in to Ghost Fingers as, uh, yeah, Prisma, Prisma has taken the Eclipse. Uh, you, as Vi, you do what you can, but unfortunately, the, one of the problems with Vi as a champion is that if you fall behind, you are less useful than a melee minion. Like, at least the melee minion takes a couple hits to kill. Vi can be killed in one shot with this build, so very true. it is very unfortunate for uh, Prisma to be so critically far behind this game because with this composition you are really banking it all on and engage from the quickness and from the cease and desist and they just those two champions are in no way strong enough to survive that dive they get killed before they even get to the back line so yep. it is so difficult at this point for them to get a one a straight on normal 5v5 fight they need to start looking for smaller picks look for smaller opportunities and maybe fight a little bit of gold back that way but i don't know if nameless will give them the chance nah nameless has been absolutely relentless uh this time around and they are definitely sticking to the numbers they know that's where they are strongest at they're ahead in every way shape and form right now level 11 to the level 10 uh zaya uh, mundo is just way too pushed up even though he has ghost even though he has ulti I don't think that's... Oh, actually, it might be enough. Okay, never mind. Flash from Swain. Very interesting. Oh, but the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. 
Yeah, Jennifer's no. arrow will not quite allow Procyon to be taken down as the briefcase will land on to C, but it's not nearly enough. Belsis dashing Ooh. over the wall, looking for the charm, not going to land on the C. C will survive there. Prisma diving over the wall, no flash. Does have the cease and desist, though. The Baron will crack open the pit, and we've got the funny pit this game, so that yeah. can be exciting. Uh, once we start seeing these Baron dances begin, but I don't know how the how well these Baron dances are gonna go. I don't know if Flannel have brought their dancing shoes this game. They are seven k gold down now at this point. As Flannel were looking for something there, but just not able to convert anything. So I guess now we attempt to fight Jax, and surely it'll go better than last time. Maybe. I mean, there are like three, four of them that are heading up there right now, but Jax is still very strong, but not 3v1 strong. Yeah. Uh, he will go down to... Uh... Um... uh... Gotta love Ignite. Gotta love Ignite. Uh, ha, 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 ha. That well, is, uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, um... You know, a couple games ago, I said that Lux getting killed, or Karma getting kills wasn't so bad. Uh, Rakan getting kills is bad. This champion does nothing with gold. <laughs> He, yeah. he could like he gets a little bit more he gets a little bit tankier with items but you could play Rakan with zero items and he would be the exact same champion like ah oh, jeez you really want you really wish you could have gotten that on Vi to try and help her out of the absolute just trench that she's in right now in terms of the jungle but I guess you take what you can get, you get the kill, and you walk away with it. Yeah, it was accidental. It was a, it was an ignite kill, but yeah, definitely unfortunate. Not the target that you want, especially out of the five kills that they have as a team. Two of them are on Rakan. So uh, you know, if it was anybody else, it might be a little bit of a different game uh, currently. But uh, Dragon is going to be up in 20 seconds here. All dragons have been claimed by Nameless right now, completely uncontested. I don't think that they're in a position to really do anything here. Teleport coming in from Jaxo on the backhand side. Enchanted Crystal Arrow hits. Oh my god. Yeah, Enchanted Crystal Arrow is going to land onto Zaya. She'll get taken down instantly. The fight's going to begin. That is where it's going to end as Atomic Rider is going to flash forward to try and land and close the gap onto Set, Appre Set Appreciator. But Set Appreciator does not appreciate that kind of aggressive maneuver and will just get out of there. On the top side, Procyon will claim an objective bounty on that top turret, but the real bounty is this Hex uh, Chemtexel, which has been picked up by Nameless as they are walking their way up to the Baron, and they are almost certainly in a good position to start this at their leisure. I've seen this kind of swagger walk before. Conor McGregor, every single time that he walks into the ring, they're swinging their arms, they're being loud, they're saying, we're taking this Baron right now. Nobody's going to go ahead and stop us. They can go ahead and try, but uh, I mean, I, I just feel like they're in a really good position to go ahead and constantly be pushing this. Teleport coming in from Mundo to the bot lane, so it's going to put him <laughs> in a 4v5 on a Baron call what to get maybe a, two, a tier 2 tower on the bot side. I get the gold aspect, maybe, but they really definitely be needing him for <laughs> these objectives. It's not real. I, I get, like, at some point you have to look at your win conditions, and I guess they've determined that fights are not going to happen anytime soon. Mm. But you can't split push if your four-man squad can't beat their four-man squad. And yeah. your four-man squad is completely worthless. So, obviously, it's not going to turn out in your favor. Mundo doesn't even get the turret because Atomic Rider just walks down there. Like, it's... I mean, Jax doesn't need to be there for that fight. His team inherently has an advantage due to all the oh. gold they have. And here comes the fight starting. Set Appreciator is going to dip away. Did it get caught by the Glacial Prison. Minami will root up Ghost Fingers, but will it be enough? The volley Ooh. doesn't quite land... But now, uh, Mundo is here, it does have Ghost, will walk away, decides to walk into- Oh, oh, oh my god! god. And, uh, oh! Uh, mm. 
I don't have any words for that. Yeah. I wish I had I had Tim Allen noises. A uh, Perseon's gonna be very low right now as we have some damage going into this inhibitor turret as flannel are on fire right now and not in a good way as the inhibs will start to be cracked the base is starting to be cracked and the mental of the casting desk is starting to be cracked as well as the yeah. fight will continue, Minami actually getting quite oh a lot of damage, but will get taken out by the Azir, sh by the Azir soldiers. And it's looking like this game might just end right here. Here comes the cease and desist into the shuffle from Azir. So much damage coming right out. One is traded back by Procyon, but it is only on two. The Sejuani as C remains alive here at so little HP. Velsis doesn't have the Spirit Rush, doesn't have anything. That's just gonna be an easy pickup as the Barrened Up roster will take two inhibs and it looks like they can end the game. Yes, it will almost certainly be an end. Zaya is up, Rakan is up, but there's no way she can even step up to contest. That will be a 26 minute decisive victory for Nameless. Yes, a game two and a game three reverse sweep victory here from the Nameless tonight, putting them on their first victory in the Gold League here against Ethereal. So congratulations to the Nameless for their first victory, one and five, I believe now on the board here. So very nice, better late than never, of course. And uh, that unfortunately puts them into uh, 0 and 6 on the other end of the spectrum there. Um, you know, both teams definitely fighting hard. First game for Ethereal was just phenomenal. Absolute game stomper. They had all the communication. They had the champion selection. They had everything there. And yet still everyone ignored Jinx. I don't understand. It's like they weren't watching us at all. <laughs> Uh, yeah, what, what, yeah, what's going on? Why aren't we dra why, why aren't we drafting? The, the answer is I'm really bad at drafting. You don't want me to. Uh, I it, it's Udi or Maokai every game for me. That, that's all I care about. Uh, I but you, you know, uh, yeah, we could have seen the Jinx. Uh, I think in the end, uh, what I feel like happened is just Nameless figured out the right rosters to play the right champions to pick to best play around what flannel showed in game one right uh flannel showed a very strong more aggressive early game composition so nameless sort of adjusted to play a little bit slower uh and try to take more controlled fights uh and in the end it they it got to a point where they were starting to once they regained their footing in the series, it was just so easy to go in and clean it up from there. Uh, that last game was not even close. <laughs> no, definitely not close. It was a very commanding victory uh, by the Nameless. And, you know, switching from the first kind of composition that Ethereal had between the Amumu and the Shen, a nice front line that was thick they were tanky they could take a lot of damage they were great at engaging keeping the cc on them i mean they kind of just went away from that in game number two they went more aggressive they had the rex eye in the top lane uh you know rather than the shen shen was just kind of playing defensively in game number one there uh and then the amumu was able to come in you know get the hard cc in game number one i even forgot who their uh what was it maokai was yeah, there was game number, in the jungle. Game number two. So, you know, they had the tankiness, but the CC just wasn't the same. It wasn't the same effectiveness. They did go to the Leandris on the Amumu in game number one. So not only did they have tank, but they also had damage there. So, you know, it just played really well. Plus, Lux was just hitting everything. All of her final sparks were on point. Talia was roaming like a like a madman. So, you know, I, the feng shui and the draft between game two and game three for Ethereal just wasn't there. Uh, you know, and I think it was a little bit desperate in game number three. They tried to put him back on another tank. Uh, you know, Mundo was coming back. Uh, you know, Shen was banned, so there was nothing that they could do about it. So Mundo was the uh, the pick here, uh, and they just weren't able to play as effective. They had a couple solo kills into the Jax, but just Jax was so commanding, so strong, uh, able to spread 
not only could he just stay in solo lane and push, but in those team fights, he definitely was able to go ahead and show his effectiveness along with the Sejuani and the Ash. Like that was just a really hard CC comp that they did in game two. And they're like, hey, we need some follow up again in game number three. Swain is just a better version of Nautilus. And uh, which I believe that they had in game number two. Uh, and then Azir is able to go ahead and poke from afar, has great damage, plays safe, uh, able to set up some defensive. Uh, if he's able to get a shuffle off, that's even better. The Emperor's Divide, you know, able to go ahead and separate the team if need be, or get one pick off, uh, you know, if necessary as well. So they just did a great job, uh, you know, mental reset and just taking the series in game two and game three so congratulations to the nameless they did phenomenal and i hope next week is just as effective for them yeah the, it, you gotta start winning somewhere uh and this could be the start of a turnaround for the team if they continue to perform as they did this game uh i think that they do have a a stronger chance of making a late season uh run uh, and reversal to you know, turn back around their misfortune from the start of the season. Uh, but hey, you know, that remains to be seen. Uh, we'll see how these two teams perform. We'll keep an eye on these two teams, of course, as we do all the other teams in the Gold League. But with that said, that's it for our broadcast tonight. I have been Becky. Joining me on the cast is Rye Lion. And we also have Owls as usual behind the scenes so next week we'll have some more gold league action coming at you so have a good evening and we'll see you all later